I don't normally read or watch other people's reviews, but the other day I caught John Darko's review of Wilson Audio's Tune Tot. And as I watched, I found myself nodding in agreement with his assessment that just because a hi-fi product is expensive doesn't necessarily mean that you are getting more, whether that more is more bass, more dynamics, or just more features in general. Because in high-end audio or specialty AV, the name of the game is often quality over quantity. But is less always more? Well, that's the question we're going to answer. So settle in, hit that like button, and subscribe as we review Linear Tube Audio's Z10 Integrated Amplifier. Yeah. The Z10 from Linear Tube Audio is an absolute work of art. Like Pininfarina is to Ferrari, the casework has been designed by the design house Fern and Roby, but the entire amplifier is built by hand in Maryland. That's right, it is American made. So hand built, yes, but this is no kit or garage build. The Z10 is elegant, tailored, and I absolutely love it. I love the touch sensitive brass buttons, the steampunk inspired LED display, hell, even the sound it makes when you switch inputs or ratchet up the volume, oh, it just, it gets me. There's absolutely nothing that I would change about the 710's design. The design of the amplifier itself is based on David Burning's patented Zotal technology. This is a tube-based integrated amplifier and is rather unique among its peers, but rather than get into the weeds about what makes it different, if you're into that sort of thing, I highly recommend that you click on over to Linear Tube Audio's website and read about this unique amplifier design. The Z10 is a push-pull Class AB tube-based amplifier that churns out 12 watts per channel into 8 ohms. In its base configuration, you will find 4 analog inputs and 1 balanced input. You will also get a tape monitor out as well as in, and there is no overlooking the WBT-sourced binding posts. There are a pair of headphone outputs on the front panel, one marked low, the other high. Low feeds your headphones a half a watt per channel into 50 ohms, whereas the high provides for a full two watts per channel at 50 ohms. You can add a moving magnet phono preamp, raising the base price of this amplifier by $500. So let's talk about what the Z10 is like, really. When paired with the right speakers and fed the right source material, the Z10 has a certain something about its sound that is very addictive. But that certain something is relegated entirely to the mid-range, high frequency, and soundstage. So this is a very specialized integrated amplifier aimed at a very specific type of listener. When listening to music on the Klipsch La Scala or Heresy Mark IVs or KLH's new Model 5s, the Z10's mid-range was mildly warm and seductive. I am not suggesting that the mid-range is overly tube-like or laid-back or vague. It's just that vocals, performers, they sit back of your speaker's front baffles just a little bit and have a smoother demeanor to them than what you may experience with solid-state designs. Vocals have a good three-dimensional quality to their body and weight that feels very lifelike and organic. There is good detail and texture, but it never feels etched or artificial. There's just a lifelike tone to the Z10's mid-range presentation. High frequencies were delicate and nimble without feeling thin or edgy. There is no sharpness to be found on the Z10's high frequency performance, so things like sibilance don't really have the opportunity to rear their ugly head, even when paired with so-called bright speakers like Klipsch. Speaking of bright, there is absolutely nothing forward about the Z10's high frequency performance. Like its mid-range, it's just, it's just a little bit laid back, but this doesn't come at the expense of detail or contrast. And it's very consistent, no matter what volume you choose to listen at, which is very good. Because this amp may only have 12 watts per channel, but when paired with the right speakers, it can play pretty loud. As for the soundstage, it is vast and layered. When listening to music on our Klipsch speakers or the KLH Model 5s, the boundaries of our room seemed of little concern to the Z10. Now, I am not going to say that its soundstage is laser etched because it's not, but it is, it is vast and easy to get lost in and start to pick up on little cues in the far reaches of recordings that may have otherwise gone unnoticed through other amplifiers. And it's actually kind of fun when this happens and the Z10 is exceedingly good at this game. With the right speakers, the performance is 100% scalable. The Z10 is capable of room-filling sound with good dynamics. Dynamics that feel, well, 
appropriate rather than forced. This is not an amplifier that pushes your music or bends your speaker's drivers to its will. No, the Z10 is far more democratic, but there's a catch. If your musical taste rests with the like of Diana Krall, Nora Jones, Elliot Smith, or Amos Lee, and you have rather sensitive speakers at 88 to 90 plus dB into a relatively stable 8 ohm load, then the Z10 may just be the integrated amplifier you have been waiting for. But if you occasionally want to get thunderstruck, the Z10 is going to let you down. When paired with the JBL L82 bookshelf speakers or the brand new Klipsch Forte 4s, music from the likes of Rage Against the Machine or even Churches, the Z10 falls apart. The bass is slow and plodding and it drags the mid-range and high frequencies down with it. And the resulting sound can sound very vague and muffled. Now before you go thinking that it must be the JBLs or the new Forte 4s, understand that this lack of bass control with certain genres of music is audible on the KLH Model 5s and Heresy Mark 4s, two speakers that based on their specs should pair very well with the Z10 amplifier. And I could maybe chalk this lack of finesse up to the amplifier's 12 watts per channel, but it's not as if the Z10 doesn't hit the low notes. It does. It just doesn't attack them. So this positive dynamic impression that I spoke about earlier is entirely from the mid-range on up. And if you're listening to acoustic music, well, there just isn't a lot of bass to drown out those dynamics. And as a result, this amplifier has the potential to be rather exceptional. But the second... Well, Daft Punk or The Weeknd enter the chat, the Z10 can't get out of its own way. Bass really is the Achilles heel of this product, which is what makes it a specialized device in the truest sense. Feed it a steady diet of acoustic or ensemble music, keep the volume at a reasonable level, and I have no doubts that you will experience hi-fi heaven. But if your musical tastes vary even a little bit, understand that the Z10 is not a Swiss Army knife. In terms of comparisons, we put the Z10 up against the Yamaha AS3300, the Musical Fidelity M5SI, our name Unity Atom, even the Deckware Zen Amp. Now, the Yamaha Musical Fidelity and name amplifiers had no problems with respect to speaker pairings because of their power output, nor did any of those three amplifiers have difficulty controlling the bass. That, and they were just better suited to a wider range of music, making them better daily drivers. With respect to the only other tube amplifier that we have in-house, the Deckware Zen Amp, I half expected the Deckware to perform very much like the Z10. But with the right speakers, I actually think that the Deckware is just a little bit more capable. The Deckware is more transparent, quicker. As a result, it's just a little bit more lively and dynamic in comparison to the Z10. Both are incredibly pure sounding amplifiers that have a humanness about them that I believe is only achievable through tube based designs. But if I had to pick one, I'm picking the deckware. I just wish that it looked like the Z10. Taking it back to Darko's analogy, you don't go to a Michelin star restaurant expecting an all you can eat buffet. You understand that you are paying for a certain experience. So managing your expectations and really understanding what type of listener you are is going to be key when selecting an integrated amplifier like the Z10. Even given my love for efficient loudspeakers, the Z10 ultimately isn't the right amplifier for me. Not because it's bad, but because I understand what type of listener I am. If I was an enthusiast whose musical taste never got rowdy, or I was looking for an amplifier purely to unwind to, or I was fortunate enough to have the funds to have multiple amplifiers that were specially tailored to my different tastes and needs, then the Z10 would be on my list. But as it stands right now, it's just a little bit too specialized for me. But that's not to say that I'm not going to look back on my time with it fondly and I can totally appreciate the craftsmanship and care that has gone into its design. So that's it. That is our review of the Linear Tube Audio Z10 integrated amplifier. What did you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I mean, we have had some pretty um, heated debates over this particular amp. We have. We um, have. This one's a real, it's, I don't know, it, it's tough and it's not tough. I know exactly how I feel about this amp. Okay. Tell me exactly how you feel about this amp 
Just go. What do you what do you feel? Okay. First off, I agree with you about the design and construction. It is beautiful. Yeah. It's so pretty. It's so well made. Just as a quick example, I'm looking right now at the new XTZ amps sitting on top of our BDI cabinet right now. Those are they're they're good at they're good amps and mm-hmm. they're pretty affordable as far as yeah. amplifiers go. But you know, if you put that particular amp next to the Z10, you are going to immediately see a the 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 light year that exists in bet- in in between the two as far as construction goes. Um, I love the 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 gold buttons and it's there's a lot to like about it. I'm not as much of a fan of the LED display display to me it kind of reminds me of a, a little bit of a light bright from my youth but maybe that's just me but mm-hmm. maybe I, now that you've heard that you won't be able to unsee it either um so let's just so i've gotten that out of the way right construction design it's, attention to detail probably among the best that we've had yeah i would say it's like a it's like a esque the construction attention to detail it feels it feels oh yeah it's kind of very similar to a like a body yeah it feels weighty it feels like it's it's substantial and i would agree with you in terms of build construction uh it's one of the best we've had in the house Mm -hmm. totally so when i saw it i really had i guess i would say had pretty high expectations oh you walked right up to it as soon as i took it out of the box and put it on top of the bdi you were like moth to a flame like you're like oh wow yeah this is yeah. It was exceptional. Yeah. And that's kind of where my love affair ends with this amp. Really? Uh, yeah. It's, I'm not going to lie. It's pretty disappointing. While I love the way it looks, I didn't like how it sounded at all with just about any speaker we paired it to. And we paired it to a lot. A lot. A lot. My a back lot. is still hurting. So I think we gave it a fair shake and gave it a fair chance. And it could sound okay or good enough, I suppose, with certain types of music, but it didn't translate to everything. To everything. Yeah. And based on the kind of music we enjoy listening to, it it's just it doesn't work for us. And and I think that you have to know who you are as a listener, like like Andrew said at the end of the review. But um, as far as the, as far as like high end and like this, you know, less is more approach to things. Um, I am going to say that I feel like when you're spending $5,000 on mm. a component, it, I think it has a little bit of a responsibility to, to maybe be a little bit more versatile. Yeah. You know? I, I don't know. I think high end, I think this is one of the, this is one of the big problems that high end faces. And this is one of the conversations that we had on our walk that was very much sparked by this amplifier, but is not about the amplifier per se. And in that, in that conversation, you know, I said, look, on the one hand, there are people that are going to look at a price of any component, whether it's hi-fi photography equipment, a car, you know, and they're going to look at it and then they're going to go to the options list and they're going to go $40,000 for these 12 things. And that's going to help dictate the value proposition for them. And it can be a high price. You know, you can go for the S class Mercedes. You're willing to spend big money, but let's face it, S class also gives you a lot of features. But that same person that may base the value of something expensive on a list of features may turn around elsewhere in their life and base the value of something else on a lack of features. For example, in our, in our case, we own Leica cameras. And I will never go on record as saying that Leica cameras are chuck full of the latest technology. They're often many generations behind. I still adore them. I still... I wish that I had the the resources to only shoot with Leica because I love the experience of doing so. Well, and the look of and it. the look of them so the look of the, the, look of the, the imagery that they create so much. But that same person that or another person or another person that you would you would say I believe in Leica cameras. They're going to look at me and go, "You are insane." 
Did you know that you can buy a $599 Canon G7X Mark III and it'll do 300 things the Leica won't? Yeah, I know it will. I know that the Canon is technically a better camera if you're going off of the feature set. But that doesn't change the fact that if I go outside or we travel somewhere, the only thing I want in my hand is our Leica camera. And the Z10 is that type of a product in the sense that if you get it, if you cotton to it, no amount of anything that anyone says is going to change your opinion of it. It's going to be your thing. And if it's your thing, it's money well spent. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, this, this was not my favorite amplifier. Um, there were a handful of experiences that I had with it, mainly with the La Scala's and the Heresy Mark IVs and KLH speakers, where I was like, I get it. I get it. Um, Go Go Penguin was one of those examples where it did. It sounded exceptional, and I really enjoyed their live uh, BBC radio performance on this amplifier. But I could not go from that, that, that wonderful performance to Robin or Kylie Minogue at the push of a button and have the same experience. It did not translate. Yeah, and you know, you talk about something like Robin, Kylie Minogue, churches. It's not like those are, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not asking it to do ACDC here. Okay. Yeah. It's those are those are electronic pop type arrangements, but they still often have a driving baseline. And it was as if the Zen amp, or sorry, I'm so sorry, the Z10, Z10, yeah. the Z10 was, you know, had concrete shoes on, yeah. just struggling to keep up. Um, it's the same with uh, the song "Wow" by Beck. It could not handle those those driving bass notes and it couldn't um it couldn't extract that tiger growl and uh, and the separation yeah i mean i thought i thought that what the problem it couldn't keep up with the bass notes and then it muddied his voice and like the higher registry yeah. of of the track you know it just it, it it was a it was frankly it was kind of a disaster but but yeah, if you're listening to something like Go Go Penguin or some, you know, if you're into contemporary jazz or we did you some know, Charlie Parker records through you know, this or, that sounded yeah, really good, you know, something um, more like folk like yeah. that doesn't have a wide swing of dynamics, yeah. then yeah, it's a more than capable amp, and and maybe maybe it's the right thing for you. Um, yeah. But on 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 a whole, I was. I just wasn't very impressed. It most of the time it sounded muffled. I actually thought that it sounded the best with the KLH. Oh five. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Hands down, that was as far as what we had in house to pair it up with. Mm -hmm. That was the best that that amp sounded. Yeah, and and I for the longest time, you know, well, while we were while I was developing my feelings for this particular amplifier. I was I was keeping everything in that 12 watt per channel box like it's just the 12 watts I just it's not enough but then we got we finally got our, our deck wear um, after being on the list and it's not a power thing unfortunately it's not a power thing there's just something about this amplifier's design that it just sort of it 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 eases off the base it eases off the base and the best analogy that you and I have been able to come up with is that when when pressed, it really does feel like your lead singer or the primary focus of the music in the face of complex bass notes is trying to reach the surface of the water. Yeah, but they're drowning. They're drowning, but it's being pulled under by the slowness of the response time of this bass. But, but you take that element away and put it on something something else and it sounds it sounds fine. Yeah, acoustic you know? piano, acoustic guitar, simple three person jazz, four person jazz ensemble. It's it can be otherworldly. 
that, and that's that's all I that's really all there is to say. It can be great, uh, but if if you're like, no, I, I put it on shuffle, and it goes through my terabytes of music, so uh, it, it has to be able to play whatever my computer throws at it. This isn't it. This isn't it. So, do you have anything else you want to add? Uh, not really. Not really. Um, no, I can't think of anything. I think, like I think, like you said, you just if you're in the market for something like this, you, you know, the the best advice I think we can give you is know exactly what kind of listener you are. What are your musical tastes, and yeah. then kind of go from there. Yeah, and Linear Tube Audio has an in-home trial period. It's it's not the I same think as like fourteen. It's days. like fourteen days. It's not the same as everybody else, but they do offer something like that. So you would get an opportunity if you were if you weren't really sure if you're watching this and you're like, well, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. You can try it in your own home, and I would I would encourage you guys to do that. Or like I said, go to their website and maybe look at some of their other designs that may have more power, slightly different circuit as those may respond differently. But I, I have no comment on those because I haven't, yeah, I haven't I heard w- them. I kind of, we had talked about that, about yeah. maybe if we had had w- one of the options that had a little bit more power, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it would do a better, could have done a better job, at least keeping up with the variety of kind of the, the type of music that we yeah. tend to experiment with, you yeah. know. So maybe we'll revisit those in in the future. I don't know. But for now, I think we can put the Z10 to bed. Yeah. Okay. So that is our review of the Linear Tube Audio Z10 Integrated Amplifier. What did you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, my question of the day for you is this. When it comes to high-end components, what side of the fence are you on? Do you think as you spend more money, you should get more? Or do you believe in you know, the specialty aspect of it. Let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. Uh, It really does help us and with YouTube and everything and help grow the channel and broaden everyone's horizons and bring them into the hobby. So please like, subscribe, and ring the bell. We are still raising money for Feeding Texas. I know the storm in Texas has been largely off the news now that things have warmed up, but there are still quite a few people in this state that need help. So please, if you can or if you haven't already, uh, click donate somewhere on your screen and give what you can today. 100% of your donation goes to Feeding Texas. Uh, If you used any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way to show your support for the work that we do here on this channel, and we both thank you very much. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.